What's up, gang? Welcome to The Greatness Machine. I'm your host, Darius from Shaw's Day. I'm so pumped to have you here with me. Now, listen, The Greatness Machine, we're about two things. Number one, people who are living their passions. And number two, those who are creating greatness in the world and doing both of these things despite the odds against them. Each episode, we're going to feature interviews with game changers, business leaders, you know, telling us their origin stories, what made them tick, what got them to where they are now. Why? So it can help you step into your greatness within your life, your business, and your career. Occasionally, you might hear a few solo episodes from myself, moi, as I say, as I leverage my 20 years of entrepreneurship as a CEO and founder to help you grow and level up in your journey to scale your life and your business. So come be a fly on the wall, enjoy the conversation, and I'm stoked to have you here with me. Guys, welcome to today's episode of The Greatness Machine. I'm your host, Darius Mashaze, and we are talking about something extra today. This is a solo. We're talking about how do you 10x your cause, your business, your idea. How do you go from that one to that 10x and do it in a very short period of time with the help of enrolling a special someone, an influencer, someone who really has a lot of social capital and experience to get them to be a part of what it is that you're building and to make that 10x what it is that you're trying to do through the power of partnership. So uh, you might be saying, Darius, what are you talking about? So I'm going to take, take you back. I'm going to tell you a quick story. And um, I'm going to tell you something that happened to me recently. Recently, I happened to 10x an idea I had. Um, many of you guys know that we just raised $250 million for our Rise Growth Partners business, uh, which I'm a co-founder and executive managing partner in. And um, what you may not know is that that original idea was not $250 million. That original idea was a $20 million idea. So uh, we 12 x that idea. Uh, I'm going to use 10 x just for uh, uh, simple numbers. But um, yeah, we 12 x 12 and a half x that idea to raise $20 million. A year ago this time, I was sitting in front of my computer working away trying to raise $20 million bucks, And here I am... 12 months later, and we raised $250 million. And you might say, well, how the hell did you do that? And um, I'm going to go forward to April last year. I was sitting at my desk uh, at Gathering of Titans, and uh, a mentor of mine, Vern Harnish, was, uh, took, the, took the room, took the stage, and, and, he, and he talked the story. And he said, who is it that you need to enroll in your cause? Who is it that you need to enroll in your idea? You know, who is it that has... The ability to take your idea and that you can go work with or that can be a part of your idea and really 10x it and write that name down on a piece of paper. And so um, I mentioned this on a previous show, but the name I wrote on, on the piece of paper was uh, my now business partner, Joe Duran. And um, at the time, I just had had a conversation with him. I was looking to see if he would be an advisor for what was then called uh, 7x7 Capital. And... Um, I thought, yeah, you know, like he's got experience and, you know, if I can get him to, you know, help in some way, maybe that can really take this idea to the next level. Um, why is that? Well, the reason for that is that, um, you know, when we start to enroll people in our cause that have social capital and, and credibility in the spaces that we're trying to grow within, it opens up doors. Um, and people, you know, will be a part of, or they will, you know, in my case, you can raise money um, if someone's been there and done that before. And Joe is a person that had incredible experience uh, building his last business, SIS, but, but specifically his last business, United Capital, to a $25 billion wealth management firm. He sold it to Goldman and became a partner at Goldman Sachs. He ran their PFM business. Uh, which was a $120 billion business. So we had a lot of credibility in the space that I was trying to get into. And so again, like my expectation was, hey, maybe I can get him to you know, help us in some way. And um, what I quickly realized was that that was a game changer because what it did was, was number one is he asked me a question. He said, well, look, like I'm not really interested in doing this if you want to do it for $20 million. I am interested, however, in doing this if you want to do this for two to $300 million. And, uh, and, and I was like, heck yeah, where do I sign up for that? So it, number one, what it d did is it pushed me to think outside of what could be possible. Like I obviously have ran big businesses before and I know that big numbers are possible. I just didn't think it was possible given the team that we had and the experience that we had. And we had never raised money before. We had never invested money before. Um, and what I soon realized was that by enrolling someone in the cause, 
that A, had raised money before. He had had seven rounds of private equity investment in his previous businesses. Number two, um, he gave credibility to the cause. Like People trust him. They'd be willing to give him a larger sum of money. And by really giving him a reason to want to join us, I was able to marry those two uh, things together. So, um, Mary, what are those two things, Darius? Well, number one was that we had an idea that he found interesting that we could support him with growing something substantial. Um, so when, when I came to him, we brought a compelling idea. Now, mind you, he, at that time, he was considering his options, was considering you know, leaving Goldman Sachs as a partner. And, um, and we were able to bring to the table an idea that he found compelling. So ask yourself the question of, what am I bringing to the table for the person that I'm trying to roll in my cause? That's number one. Like I, I truly believe in life that if we want to you know, go exponential, if we want to build big things, it's around how do we create value for others? So what was the value that I could bring to him? And it was really a couple things. Number one was we had a team. Number two was we had a pipeline. And number three is I'm an experienced entrepreneur and CEO who's built something to scale. And so for him, he saw that and said, great, well, I have a great operator. I have a team and we have a pipeline. And we'd already gotten it off the ground. So in his mind, he wasn't going to have to go and do a startup. And he had said to me early on, look, I'm, I'm, I swore I'd never do a startup again. And so we made that decision easy. Now, once we got into the process of trying to put the deal together, which, which took a long time, it wasn't something that happened overnight. April was when I wrote his name on the piece of paper. We didn't go public till September that we were that he was going to explore this opportunity in public. So May, June, July, October, you know, May, June, July. <laughs> Darius, you can't. It's too early in the morning. May, June, July, August, September. Five months. Right? Five months. I will tell you, I told him this in, I think, July or August. I said, every day I wake up and I think to myself, how can I get Joe to do this deal with me? And that wasn't the mentality I had. So think to yourself, do I have A, what name are you going to write down on the piece of paper? And then B, I want you to really ask yourself, what do you want to do to enroll that person? Because for me, it was easy. It was bring value, make it easy, make it something that it was a no-brainer on his part, and continue to bring value. And I did that day in and day out, every single moment I could for five months until we announced in uh, September. And what did that look like from a practical standpoint? It looked like this. It looked like flying to California numerous times to meet with him to talk about the business. It looked like building the brand, rebuilding the brand. Seven by seven became Rise, rebuilding the logo, rebuilding the website, rebuilding every single thing about this thing that made it where he could see it come to life without having to commit to it. It looked like um, going out and starting to meet with folks that he wanted to introduce us to and having those conversations. It looked like meeting with a team and really putting together our thesis and, and kind of pushing and pulling on it. But again, it, I, I tried to make it as easy as possible for him to continue to be engaged. And it wasn't around me asking anything of him more than just, hey, let's just, just stay engaged and let's, let's see if we can get this thing you know, somewhere. Um, and what I found was the more engaged I was in the process of trying to make it giving value and making it a value add, um, I guess, opportunity, the more he became engaged. And what was really interesting was, was that there was some credibility that was formed, was that he could see in action that we were people that executed on our ideas. And that gave him more confidence in wanting to be part of it. And I'm putting some words in his mouth, but this is at least what I believe to be true. Um, and, and I knew that for someone of you know Joe's caliber in the space, that to get him to announce publicly was really important, um, and that if he was really in, that was that's how I knew. And so again, I did everything I could possible to make it where it was a no brainer for him to want to be a part of the cause. And with that, he brought many you know he came bearing many gifts, most of which was his experience, his reputation, so that we were then able to go hire an investment banker take that investment banker, run a real process. And we ran a real process. We talked to a ton of private equity, we went to New York many times. We did the whole roadshow thing, teach ins you name it, so that we eventually you know, found an investor. In this case, it's a firm out of Boston and New York called Charles Bank, who committed to investing $250 million. 
So you might say, say, well, Darius, you know, I can't do that. You know, I can't get, you know, someone of that caliber to, to come enroll in my cause. And the answer is maybe you can't, or maybe you have the wrong cause. I mean, for me, had I, let's say, tried to do this 10 years ago, the answer would have been a big fat no. Why? I wasn't bringing enough to the table. You know, the biggest thing I brought to the table was I ran an institutional sized mid market company. I was a CEO of a couple hundred million dollar company. I would, you know, anyone that looks at that says, well, okay, this person's legit. But more importantly than that, if I had just had that, but didn't back it up with my actions, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. It wouldn't have happened. There's no chance that I would be out here being able to say that I was successful in this. My actions spoke to my experience. My, my co-founder's actions spoke to our experience. And that gave us credibility. That created trust. And when people trust things, they're willing to lean in. So start to think to yourself, okay, well, what do I bring to the table? And don't sell yourself short. A lot of people have imposter syndrome when it comes to stuff like this. I, I, I was talking to a buddy of mine the other day. And I said, I, I don't, I'm not afflicted by that. Uh, I'm not afflicted by that disease. I don't have imposter syndrome. Um, I'm, a, I'm a person that believes that if one human can do it, then I can do it. And um, therefore, I'm going to go do it. And so um, I don't, I'm not afflicted by that disease. You shouldn't be either. But at the same time, I'm also realistic. I know what I bring to the table. And then I go bring it to the table. And when you show up to bring value and do it in an authentic way and have credibility and do it with confidence and have a decent idea, if we didn't have a good idea, we had figured out a, you know, what we perceived to be a niche in the market or a gap in the market that we were able to help with. Um, In in this case, it's um, going into, you know, high growth wealth management firms and, and helping them with, by giving them capital and giving them support. And, and that's a conversation for a whole different time if anyone ever wants to learn more about my new business. But the, the point is, is that we saw something in the market that he agreed with, that Joe agreed with. And, and, and that had he not agreed with it, by the way, he wouldn't have enrolled either. So it's really, you know, being open-minded, finding a good idea, bringing value, and then thinking to yourself, well, who, who could really help bring this idea to life in a much bigger way? And how can the, I support them? with this idea as well. So think to yourself those things. I, I give you a lot of stuff to think about, but but who is it? Who, who Who's that person where you would be bringing value to them and they'd be bringing value to you? And if you marry those two, two things together, you build something really special. And I can tell you just having myself being a real life example that I don't think I did this enough early in my career. And this is one reason you may want to consider bringing in outside investors in your business. Well, why why is that, Darius? The reason for it is it kind of keeps you honest because when you're working in a bubble or you're bootstrapping, you're doing it by yourself, you know, you just kind of grind. You go in there and and whatever you get, you get. And and I did that for the first, you know, 20 years of my my career. It made me a really, really good operator because I I learned to do a lot with not very much. And I learned to do a lot with not very much at scale, which, you know, one could argue made it where I could do what I just did right now. But think to yourself, okay, what can I do with what I'm working with? And who can, I, who can I get to invest? Who can I get to be on my board? It doesn't need to be a partnership like in my case. It could be as simple as being on an advisory board for you. It could be as simple as having a converse, cup of coffee with you once a quarter to have a conversation. And, and getting those outside for perspectives from people that have been there and done that, that are trying to do something that you're trying to do, but doing it way, way, way bigger. Because that's, that's the other thing that I think was really important here. In my world, you know, coming new to the wealth management space, I'd never done it in wealth management. I'd done it in other parts of financial services from a large organization. But I, I needed somebody that had done it, been there, done that. And, and I couldn't have picked a better person in connecting with Joe. And, and, and again, like my first time I connected with them, I had nothing. I had no expectations. Mine was, hey, I want to bounce this idea off someone super smart. I went reach reached out to a, a, a friend of ours, Matt, and I said, hey, um, uh, <laughs> you, know, you guys will all appreciate this. I said, hey, I have two questions for you because he, he and Joe are, are in form, in form together at YPO. I said, I have two questions for you. Number one is, do you think Joe will do my podcast? Number two, do you think he'll advise my fund? He said, yes to number one, no to number two, or I don't think so for number two. Um, so I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to go and bounce my idea off someone smart. So think as easy as that. Who can you bounce your idea off of? Who is someone who is that really truly is an expert at what you're trying to build. 
And and that could be a starting point because I went in with like, hey, I just need 30 minutes of this guy's time just to see if, am I crazy? Is my idea good or is it bad? You know, now he might have said it was bad and maybe he would have been wrong, maybe he would have been right, but at least I would have got a perspective. And more importantly than that, I, I had a smart person looking at my deal, giving me their insights. And I'll tell you that first conversation, like he was ripping in the idea. When we got off the call, I said to my, my, my other co founder, Dan, at the time, I said, I don't know if that went well or not. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, the one thing that was really important was he said, Hey, let's schedule another call. And he told me something after the fact a few months later. He said, Listen, I scheduled, I didn't schedule, I scheduled that first call with you as a favor to our, our, our friend Matt. I did not schedule the second call with you for that reason. So something we said, the idea was good enough. He saw that we were people that he could maybe, you know, work with in some capacity um, was brought about during that 30 minute conversation. And, and there's no person on earth outside of yourself that could have made that happen. I could not have made that happen by just Matt saying, Hey, I need you to go uh, potentially partner with my friend Darius. Like that, that would have got me zero. The reason this came to be was he met us. He liked us, he liked the idea and he wanted to learn more. And that created the second conversation, which created the third conversation, which created the fourth conversation and then so on and so forth. And here we are, uh, nine, 10 months later, and we just closed on 250 million bucks. And we're about to go change the world of wealth management with an idea that we 10 x just 12 months ago, from just 12 months ago. So I want you to write down that piece of paper, the name on that piece of paper. I want to thank Vern Harnish. Uh, that was a really helpful exercise. So Vern, if you're listening, this one goes out to you. Um, and yeah, go out there, 10 extra ideas, find the right people to partner with. Until next time, peace out. We love you. You are listening to The Greatness Machine, and that's a wrap for today. Listen, if you love what you heard, subscribe to the show on whatever podcast platform that you're tuning in on so that you don't miss any of our future episodes. We have tons of great people coming on, and we're, we're stoked to have you here to enjoy it with us. Leave us a review. Tell us what you love most about this particular episode. We love getting the reviews. We love to see what you guys love most. And if this particular episode you know, made you think of someone who's leveling up in their business and in their life, print screen, share it with them. Leaders are the best givers. And after all, we're all here to support and grow with each other. And in case you want to see some of the fun behind the scenes shots or some of the things that we're doing, I'm actually writing about this in my weekly newsletter. Go to www.therealdarius.com and subscribe to my newsletter. We're talking about fun things like business and life and mindfulness and cryptocurrencies and gosh, I don't even know everything and anything, but it's tons of fun stuff I write about. I try to get it out on a weekly basis. You can subscribe at www.therealdarius.com. And with that said, look, thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. I love you. Peace. We're out of here. See you guys on the next one. Uh-huh. She's my lover.